Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Just now was the video was sponsored of Virtual Science Fair 2021. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to Kenanga Investors Berhad for sponsoring us throughout the event. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We meet again in VSF Science Exhibition brought to you by Virtual Science Fair 2021. My name is Amira Arianti and I will be the MC for today. It is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to the VSF Science Exhibition 2021 and I think we have now refreshed and ready for our third student bodies of the day, Persatuan Physik UM or PERFORM. For your information, PERFORM is a UM Physics Association which aims to promote and educate the public about physics and science. I believe the audience are curious to know further about this. So without further ado, I would like And Ms. Noor Amiran. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, good day, greetings. My name is Jasmine from Perfume, and I, I'll begin my presentation. Thank you to the MC. First, I present the UM Virtual Science Fair Physics. Okay, first I'll present the presenters who are the presenters. Starting with me, I'm Jasmine Faiz from Persatuan Physik University of Malaya Perfume. I'm the current president of Perfume. Next, we have a graduate physics student who used to be Perfume president. Now he's an advisor, Tay Lian Seng. He's here with us. And also we have a material science uh, basically grad student. But then uh, what, what they call, I like to use the, this wording because technically they haven't grad, but they have finished their studies. No, I no mean, Thank you. Then we move on to the table of contents. Uh, first of all, I like to keep this casual. So very simple, not much cost information. You guys can refer to the cost to the website or the relevant channels. So firstly, I will talk briefly about perform, what, what we are, what we do. Then secondly, why physics? Why I chose physics personally and was hot in physics a bit. And then intro to UM Physics, I, I introduce you guys about regarding what's in physics department and what's in physics course and who's uh, what we call remarkable people or alumni in there. And then lastly, the gist of this presentation is our experience. How me, Sang and Amira experience as a student in UM, particularly physics department. So, and then lastly, the conclusion, the final words and takeaway message. So without further ado, I start a bit about perform. So here's a brief history about this club. Physics club has already existed previously in UM, but there was something happened back then, I forgot what, but then it was frozen in one point in time before. But then in December, 26 December 2017, it's officially recognized again by the HEP, Student Board, uh, Student Hal uh, Ewa but then, uh, so we could start doing official activities and programs. So PERFORM, as you can see here, stands for Persatuan Physics in Simlaya. And it's a club organized by students of UNIS under the Department of Physics. Uh, so we have uh, what members from physics uh, course and material science course. Uh, although we are uh, organized under the Department of Physics, technically we could accept uh, what students from other department but it really happens so Pardon me, yes. i think you forget to share the slides oh huh. my bad my bad sorry okay okay can you see my screen now yeah okay sure. my bad my bad Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, okay, again, this is basically just now represented me, the Persatuan Physics University President, and then Tay Lian Seng, the advisor, and Amira, uh, material science grad right now, but completed her studies. And then the table contents about perfume, by physics, and intro, and our experience and conclusion. So back again to perfume. Okay, so, uh, now I can see logo. As I said, we are uh, frozen one point in time, but then recognize again. And then stands for Persatuan Physics in Timlaya, and a club organized by uh, what physics and the science under the Department of Physics. But then uh, we can talk a bit about the logo. You can see this nice logo with the uh, what uh, Bohr atomic model, and then there's a light bulb here. Uh, it was designed by a senior a long time ago, but I couldn't uh, trace back who's the senior. But but 
at least we still have the information about what the motives mean. So first, I'll start with the orbiting atom. So it, it, say, it states that club members always center around the need to find innovation, dedication, and perseverance in the effort to move the club forward. Now we can see there's an orbit here, the blue color orbit. It symbolizes the bond and closeness between all members of the club. And of course, this really obvious apparent orange light bulb, which symbolizes the oath and commitment to find and contribute ideas to the club to propel it forward. And because it's a light bulb, it also symbolizes the light that guides UM to the path for greater good. <laughs> so here's our basic objective. So we have basic four basic objectives in this club. Firstly, knowledge. Of course, we have to serve the as a platform for students to learn and apply physics and science, basically. And then secondly, empowerment. To empower students to become more holistic. We do not only want students to focus only on academically. We want them to focus also in real life application. So we do projects, activities, and programs to empower students. So thirdly, contribution. So when we do a project, we try to make sure it contributes to the society in a positive manner. So we actively engage and contribute to society by practicing what we learn, aka STEM knowledge. And lastly, relationship. We want to build a strong relationship among the physics community, among the students in this club or department, or maybe even students at UM, and students around the world, hopefully. Uh, it's not just what they call centered just within this club. So we our activities are divided mainly to four exco's. Firstly, the academic exco's. Of course, uh, what we did a lot of uh, academic oriented uh, program or activities such as coding camp with academic exco's, and then we have the unity exco uh, as it may suggest, and then outreach and welfare exco and publicity exco. So basically, these exco are limited to their scope. But technically, even though they are limited to their scope, we actually what uh, mismatch each other. We don't have really a definite boundary of what activity you can do and can't do. So don't we? So we have did a lot of activities and program. Even though it's COVID right now, it didn't stop us. We uh, still did uh, a lot of activities for online activities. But yes, before the COVID, we did something called Physics Interaction Day. This is in, I believe, 2019, whereby students uh, interacted, students so of physics, uh, introduced to what uh, the physics department and we had a lot of activities games and stuff and then this was uh, a few years ago whereby there's a industrial visit to top cliff tower top cliff uh, building where the students there are uh, introduced to the processes and the manufacturing and the what the business of top cliff and then we also had coding camp uh, python is used in physics quite excessively especially in doing this course because for numerical methods it's a useful coding language to learn for us. So we created a coding class uh, which are taught by seniors who are a lot more proficient in the subject. And then there's a, another what physics open day during what 2020, during the when, when COVID happened. So we had to do a what uh, online activity. So we did a physics open day during 2020. And then there's also a STEM talk whereby we gave a, a bit introduction about STEM and physics and what it's about to secondary students. And this is also recently, we had a uh, virtual conference to all universities and the general public, whereby we talk about uh, extraterrestrial travel and inhibition uh, uh, taught by our speaker, Dr. Juan Carlos Algaba, which I'll explain more about later. So uh, shameless plug here. Uh, if you guys are interested to join or anything or to see more information and more activities, here's our social media plug. Uh, this is our Twitter. Facebook, and Instagram. So uh, that's pretty much it for Perfume. Now I'll be sharing why why physics and why they are joined and what physics is all about. So first of all, why? Why they are joined physics and why is physics? Really? So you can see there's a sprawling mass of equations here, history C, standard model equation. It's like really complicated, looks hard, looks really difficult, but why? So personally speaking, uh, when I was very young, as from a young age, I love science. I like to read, I like to discover stuff. I like to look at nature and think, how does that work? So I've been reading stuff about biology, chemistry and physics, etc. And then I've been wondering, hmm, which one should I major into? It's like uh, all of them, I like them equally. But then I found an inclination towards physics. It seems like physics maybe has an what opportunity or potential to create the greatest impact for the greater good. Because learning about the what the scientists and the great people back then, you see that we are truly standing on the shoulders of giants 
And I feel like I want to become like one of them to contribute back to society and may- maybe make the world a greater place. But then the thing is, when I state this to my friends or to my parents or to my cousins, uncles or whatever, they be thinking, why physics? What can you do in physics? Why, what they call, do you think physics is a saturated field? Do you think physics, there's not much to discover? Which brings me back to actually a quote by a famous physicist. This guy, Albert A. Mikkelsen, a Nobel Prize winning physicist. Back then, during the right before 1900s, he has this quite famous quote. The more important fundamental laws and facts of physical science have all been discovered. And these are so firmly established that the possibility of ever being supplanted in the consequence of new discovery is absolutely remote. So what he basically saying is that there is back then there's no physics to discover. Newton laws of motions, everything are so concrete that we are just finding minute details, everything. So there's no point in going to physics that much because it's basically saturated in 1800. But then we know that's not wrong. This is and that's not correct. The this four men has proved him wrong. So we can see this bottom left guy is actually uh, Max Planck. He he's also known as the father of quantum uh, what quantum mechanics. He proved him wrong in a something called the quantum revolution, whereby uh, there's a study about black body, which conflicts with the current theory and give birth to something called quantum mechanics. And we can we all know the familiar what atomic structure with the electron orbiting around everything. It, it could be attributed to this guy, Niels Bohr. And of course, this third guy, I think most of you guys know him. He's Albert Einstein. He made, create, created a lot of great work in general reality, especially relativity, which shook you know, physics, uh, give a new insight. And then here, Erwin Schrodinger, also uh, what a pioneer in quantum mechanics. He, we, we probably heard of him of the paradox Schrodinger cat. But then, yeah, so we can see that this quote May, back then may may make sense, but then actually it's quite ignorant. But then uh, I giving the benefit of doubt because they, that's all they know back then. But then you may ask, yeah, what's okay? What what happens in physics with Sandy? So let me share. There's plenty of things happen in physics. With Sandy. This are uh, all just the example of what had been happening with, with, within four or five years ago. So actually, this some of them even is in construction. This is uh, firstly the top left is the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER, whereby we're gonna what uh, scientists around the world and corporation around the world spends billion to construct a experimental fusion reactor. It's actually under construction last year, 2020, and will be uh, operational in 2025. Um, I'm very excited about that. And then this is a what neutrino detection center, I believe in Japan. Neutrinos are particle, uh, what elementary particle which are very light, and uh, but then they are passing through, millions and billions are passing through to us right now. But the thing is, we can't really detect them because their mass is so light. But then this also, in 2018, the Nobel Prize of Physics is uh, being demonstrated, it's called an optical tweezers. They literally are holding something with light. And here we can see a quantum computer. I, I think most of you have heard about quantum computer. This is Google's one. And then this will be a new telescope to replace Hubble telescope back then. It is the James Webb Telescope. I, I, I forgot when it will be launched, but it will be launched soon. And this is also the pioneer of 2016 Nobel Prize in Physics, this LIGO, Laser Inter- Infinimatory Gravi- Gravitational Wave o- uh, Observatory, whereby uh, what the gravitational wave from two colliding neutral stars is detected here. And this also, this little guy is the Perseverance rover. He was launched last year. I think many of you also heard the news. And this also, uh, the picture of black hole, the Messier 87, is really remarkable. This picture is uh, millions of light years away. There's like trillions or trillions of kilometers away. But then they could capture this image, really astounding. And this is the current most expensive uh, what scientific experiment in the world, the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, what we see here is a component called the Central Moon Solenite. I think, um, I'm not sure how many of you know, but in 2016 or so, uh, there's a discovery of very important particle called the Higgs boson, which shook our models of physics. Okay, and that is just the exam- uh, example I could think of. There are many things you can do in physics. Okay, but then I can move on to UM, intro to UM physics department. So this physics department, this is actually an old photo. You can see there's no motive here, but then I tried to go and take a new photo. So, so basically it was established in 1961, around the same time UMKL was established. 
and then it is situated be, beside the science faculty and then it also consists of two major program uh, ma mainly physics and material science but then we also have a joining program from academy pengajian islam whereby they they study science and physics also here and faculty of education they where they study uh, physics and education so we have this motif in front of the what the department and then we also have this quote by one Ahmad Tajuddin is a professor who recently retired in from visit the world and how far have you been upon this white world and you must be wiser for the things you have seen yeah it's a really interesting quote so i like to introduce a bit about our facilities in the physics department so first of all uh, most of us would go through lab in during the, our first year so First year lab, there's uh, all kinds of components like oscilloscopes, uh, what resistors, resistors, and then maybe like uh, neutron cradle and stuff like that to generally introduce ourselves to the life of experimentalists. And then secondly, there's something called electronic lab, which has uh, what more in-depth electronic component from our first year lab, so we can do a lot more stuff in electronics. And then of course, going to the basic physics lab is basically uh, the an upgrade to the first year lab. We do uh, slightly more complex experiment compared to the first year. Then the applied physics lab, as the name suggests, we do stuff for the applied physics. I can't speak much about what what's inside this because I'm taking the applied physics lab for uh, e-learning right now. And then we have material science and teach, uh, teaching lab and computer lab. I haven't been to the material science lab, but then I've been to the computer lab for registration purposes. But then we also have some few auditorium, also known as uh, day one. So first of all, uh, this, there's one called Day One Kulia Physics, where lectures are commonly held in here. And it's this Day One Kulia Physics actually is quite old. Yeah, I, think, I believe it's uh, what's been situated since the department has been started. So many, many lectures has been done here and many graduates has been taught here. And also there's this auditorium physics. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, back then when I visited, it's still under what repairs, but I'm not sure. I think maybe it completed the repairs now. <laughs> and then there's also a classroom called Bilik Seminars uh, where tutorial classes with 50 people. And then there's second uh, Bilik Seminar Physics B, 50 people. But then there's also an interesting room called the LearnX, whereby uh, students like us uh, could create stuff for projects or what club at, uh, activities. Because this LearnX has uh, a 3D printer and a lot of stuff. So we can uh, basically mix stuff with the Linux, uh, Linux uh, room. So this is actually a photonics lab. As we know, UM, UM, is also, uh, UM physics department is also a research place. This photonic lab has uh, did a lot of research. Uh, and then we also, I believe some of our professors also created pat pat patents for companies like TM and stuff uh, through this lab. So moving on from the facilities, we also have a lot of notable people from our department. This is Professor Ulong, uh, Dr. Harif. So basically, he is a PhD grad from Wales. Uh, Professor Ulong is a title that was given to only select few Malaysian scientists. I believe only five people. Yeah, he's one of them. And he's teaching at UM. So he's also a researcher in UM, whereby he's one of the first people to go to photonics as an exp expertise. And he has created around, I think, 10 patents to uh, Telecom Malaysia. So this guy contributed, contributed a lot to our what, Malaysia infrastructure development. And here we have the current head of department, Professor Zuvina. She's also a PhD UM. So whenever you visit UM, you may see her in the billboard and she's the current head of department. And then this guy, maybe most of you, I don't know this guy, but he's, he's one of the richest men in Malaysia. His net worth is a few billion ringgit. He's actually, finally, he's Mr. Mr. Lim. He's the founder and current chairman for Top Glove. He is actually a physics grad in, I believe, late 1960s or early 1970s, I forgot. And then this uh, guy in the middle here is a Spanish guy. He's actually uh, what, uh, Dr. Juan Carlos Algaba. He's from Spain. He's actually uh, what, teaching UM right now. And that he's actually one of the people who is involved with the discovery of the black hole picture. So it's very fascinating to have him uh, here teaching in UM. And then this bottom right is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Siti Munyandi, he's also a lecturer in UM, PhD in Oxford, but then he's actually, I believe, involved in creating and editing some of the syllabus in SPM physics. Maybe that's why it's a bit difficult now. <laughs> okay, now we move on to our experience. 
So, uh, speaking of from my experience, I'll start with myself, then maybe move on to Seng and Amira. So basically, about myself, uh, I am lucky to be able to spend uh, a bit of time in UM, even though it was short because of the pandemic. I joined in UM with, around September 2019. Was wondering, you know, uh, what UM is about? Is it true the prestige, you know, the rank and everything? So I joined a college called KK3, uh, College Kedia Merkusha. So, and then uh, what's, what's running on my mind is like, first, uh, I have to make connections. I have to I join activities to make new people, make new friends. So I've joined a lot. I too, <laughs> perhaps too much activity. I joined sports activity and I joined uh, activities in my college and I even activity performed before I was a president. So uh, starting with my first year, uh, was busy with studying and getting to know people. So uh, the first year's uh, subject, we learned about statistics and introduction to physics. And it was then that I know that I should have studied a bit before entering uh, what entering my undergraduate because a lot of my math skills uh, have been worn out. Because uh, I graduated from matrix and then uh, after matrix, I worked a bit for a few months. So during that working time, I had no time to study uh, uh, we we check my mathematical knowledge and stuff like that. So it was a bit tough for my first year, but then uh, you catch up. So, but then during the first year, I met a lot of great people. I met a lot of friends. Uh, I met a lot of doctors. The doctors here, funnily enough, uh, is very kind. So like you, you could approach them and ask them about question without no problems. That, that was uh, one of the most surprising thing about me because uh, we've been taught that uh, what teachers and doctors are usually are strict maybe for my experience, but then here people are so easygoing that made you remember that now you're an adult. So you can discuss about your future, discuss about what the subjects and stuff. So this is uh, a picture from my meeting of uh, a subject called social engagement, whereby we had to create a what, engage, something to engage with society. And then there's a doctor here, there's a senior, and this is me. So this is a, a picture from our first, uh, what? examination hall uh, picture after we completed our paper. I believe this was statistics. So you can see the chair on our faces without uh, without knowing, being ignorant of what's going to come in the future. We, things are just going to get harder. But then, of course, we are living in the moment right there. And then, of course, this is just some uh, random picture from uh, some former maths class, this this doctor is called Dr. Chu. He's actually one of the kindest doctors I've ever met. Uh, God bless his soul. So. I believe that uh, you, whenever you're in what UM or anything in your university, regardless of your university, one thing I recommend is to take pictures often because you never know when to cherish them. You never know if they mean something to you. So that, sadly enough, I that's pretty much my physical experience. Then in 2020, March, I had to go back to my home because COVID quarantine happened. So uh, starting from there, uh, e-learning happened. E-learning was a bit rough from the start because everyone was adjusting to the new normal. But then, thankfully, uh, the lectures was some lectures. Most lectures are completed now. Some, some not so. But then, uh, we managed to get on track with everything, the schedule, learning, and the exams, and everything. And then, uh, what late mid July or June or August, I believe I became the president perform last year. So I became a president. Uh, succeeding Seng uh, last year uh, during the pandemic already. So we had to create, I had to think about uh, activities uh, during the, which suits the learning. And that's pretty much my experience right now. Uh, there's like something called the final year project and uh, work opportunities, but then I believe that could be shared most to the, what, uh, Amira by Seng. And disclaimer, if you may notice that I only talk mostly about physics be before this, not much about material science. Because actually, material science, uh, the this year batch is the last batch. Uh, material science will be discontinued, discontinued from uh, physics department until further notice. I'm not sure why, but then yeah, that's the set realities right now. But there's still people studying material science, the what the current people study. So I think I can. Uh, that's pretty much my experience for me. I think I can move to Sang Amira, if you like to share your experience. Hello, everyone. So uh, I am Seng, so I'm a physics graduate from University of Malaya. I just currently graduated and my experience with physics is, uh, I would say if you do physics, take a minute, 
Uh, wait a minute. Maybe Amira, you go first. I have some background right. noise. Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. As you all know, my name is No Amira. I recently finished my study in uh, unofficially finished finished my study in material science course because okay so if you if you notice uh, if you if you if you heard from what Jasmine said our course is actually been suspended or discontinued or froze until further notice I'm also not quite sure why but then we uh, we got this news since uh, in uh, last year if I'm not mistaken what my doctor said because apparently that uh, material science uh, don't know which one to go. It's like the engineering or department of physics. And if I said about material science, people are often confuse whether we're in um, chemistry, actually, or uh, other places. But we're currently in uh, department of physics. So basically, uh, material science is a multidisciplinary area which combines the physics, chemistry, and also biology. That is actually us. But then they want to kick us out, something like that. I don't know. Lah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, if I were to say to you much about my courses, it would be um, pointless because there will be no intake for material science for the next um, intake to 2021 to 2022. But then I share to you experience um, in Department of Physics. So basically, uh, there are two, uh, three kinds of major, like what Jasmine said from material science, uh, physics, and also from Academy Pengajian Islam. Academy Pengajian Islam is actually a double major. They've got um, the uh, religious study and also the science, what they choose. So basically, um, actually during this uh, experience, through perfume, they actually organize tons of activity to bonding uh, through these students. Because uh, if you, because we have kind of like a bit of circle because we have different kind of classes. We met um, different people. They're not in our class sometimes. So it kind of create a um, wedge between us. So basically, uh, Perfume trying to bond these people. So uh, they cre uh, we create a, a few of activities such as for first year, we've got, um, um, I'm sorry, what is it? I forgot the um, get to know get to know the first year that we will arrange and then the second one is for the social engagement that social engagement is actually uh, a, a very compulsory 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 volunteering uh, for us to do and we'll be we, we, we will do the, that comp uh, activities with the with the physics student also to go to schools and doing uh, any kind of activities that is related to physics and then we also have this, um, if we going to the physical, if we're going to campus physically during exam, if I'm, uh, we will be having a uh, doa selamat before exam. And also we, we will be doing uh, with the doctors um, before puasa can ada chalek. Um, uh, and also a uh, doa and also gathering and a, a little bit of, um, eating together, and we also have uh, so we also have taraweh together. Actually, that's uh, what most of our experience uh, in physics department. Basically, it's the friends. You choose your friends, and I'm sure uh, it'll be fine. And you connect with each other. But I, but then I think it's going to be a bit difficult right now because uh, people who studying during this pandemic will be studying at home, you guys uh, will be doing online classes. So you won't get to know people on personal level or you won't get to get to know people much more closer. I like that. So I will be giving to Seng to further continue about perfume. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my experience with uh, physics. So I would say if you want to take physics, you are among the daredevils. Uh, okay. Those... Uh, yeah, so I took physics without many consideration. Actually, I was too uh, straightforward that time. I just put physics as my first choice. Then, yeah, then I get into the physics department. So I have looked through some of the questions you guys asked. So yeah, some of you asked, uh, do we need to be iterate in calculus or maths? Uh, 
the career prospect, everything like this. Okay, I do ask myself during my studies and I question my life. <laughs> so <laughs> that's basically what will what will you experience and what most of the I would say undergraduate will experience that's common. So my experience with physics, uh I came in first year, I thought that okay, it's going to be like my pre use, you know, lecturers are going to teach well, but our lecturers are more prone to self-independent studies. They let the students explore themselves. So that's how university works. So it took me a few years to uh, get adapt to that. And uh, I took my final year project uh, studying quantum work. Uh, I think I said, let's say it's a quantum communications uh, project. So from there, I start to see the research part of uh, physics okay before that i'm we are doing the basic learning lecture go to go to example answer your paper so once i get to the research part and that's the interesting part of studying science you get to answer the frontier questions big problems or you get to contribute to the developments of science of all around the world so I was inspired by my experience with the research. So currently I'm applying for a postgraduate with, under the quantum communication project. So that's overall my experience with physics. And then I think next is a QA or mm -hmm. I believe so next the QA. Is my mic on? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, thank you, Sang, for your presentation, uh, for your sharing experience. But before we end this session, I, I would like to give a few final words for people with doubts and uh, everything else to see that whether you know you should join physics or not, because in the end, you know, it's everything is up to you. So I like to give a few final words from one of my favorite scientists, Richard Feynman. Nobody ever figures out what is life all about, and it doesn't matter. I explore the world, nearly everything is interesting enough if you go into it deeply enough. So maybe you're interested in physics, maybe you're interested in chemistry, maybe biology or engineering. There have to be no rivalry and every field is important on its own. So if you have certain keen interests and you think that it could benefit society or the future in one way or another, go for it. Don't worry. And if you think you choose the uh, what wrong course or anything, it's not the end of the world, don't worry. Uh, most of us are still young, even if you're old. You, you can never stop studying. You can study and you can contribute in one way or another. So do not worry about most of the small stuff. Just follow your passion. And of course, uh, follow your heart. But then you can also ask for advice if you're unsure about something. So uh, that's pretty much for me, uh, me, Sang, and Amira for our sharing session. Thank you, everyone. And thanks to the audience. Now we move on to the Q&A. Thank you. Okay, what are the career prospects of this field? Three Nivita. So what field are you referring? Physics or material science? I am studying physics, so maybe Mira can talk about material science. So in physics, uh, in Malaysia, physics, actually we have a lot of branches. Okay, just to name a few, we have photonics, astrophysics, we have particle physics, and then we have radiation physics, and then uh, what else? Uh, semiconductors. So these are all the prospect fields, right? I think you guys, if you are secondary students, you're probably not going to expose to this much, okay? But we do have research going on in these fields and these are exciting fields. And in terms of career prospect, if you do well in your studies, usually companies are willing to recruit you as uh, engineers because currently I don't think we have a uh, photonics engineering courses it's only you can only learn photonics in depth in in physics UM course. Okay, that's one of the advantage if you take physics. That's one of the branch they will give you uh, industry edge. So usually what we do is uh, we can apply to be a product engineers or we can be process engineers because we are well equipped with how the process going to occur. So how am I going to optimize? such process so that my product is going to produce faster so these are the engineer technical part or if you are an outgoing person there's another career prospect for you which are sales okay because in malaysia we have a lot of big companies they are selling products scientific products uh, for example they are selling uh, digital microscopes okay they are selling 
laser sensors. They are selling, um, maybe selling scanning electron microscope. That's very expensive. So these are the equipments that we do have companies selling. Just to name a few, uh, we have Kumpulan Airbag, we have uh, Kiens, we have Jabil, we have On Semiconductor. So you can become their salesperson because you are well equipped with the physics knowledge. You know how the process is going on. You can do a proper product demonstration to the customers and company willing to recruit, uh, what I would say, to recruit fresh men is already well equipped with this knowledge. They just need to train you on the sales. Okay, so there's a lot of careers prospect in this field. Another career would be the academic path. So if you join physics, you want to dedicate yourself to research. Okay, that's another rewarding career. Okay, so to be say, meaning you take postgraduate, then you become postdoctoral, okay, postdoc. Then after that, you apply for senior lecturer. So, and then associate professors, professors. So that's the ladder, okay? It's, uh, I say it's, it's a competitive field. We want among the best, you know, in this research field. It's a challenging field, but it's uh, relatively, it's very, the job security is high if you join the academic path. Okay, if you manage to land it yourself upon a permanent position in academic field, yeah, your job security is high and you are able to put on food, you know, while working on the table, put food on the table, but while working on something you're really interested in. So that's a uh, career prospect around that. So from physics sides of view, so maybe Mira, you can talk about uh, material science. Okay, so basically for material science um, career path, I think uh, it will be divided into two. One's in industrial and another one is academic. Um, academic is the same as physics. Uh, it's what uh, Seng has already said, that if you want to further continue in academic, you will go for a researcher, you'll be a researcher. Uh, but then if you want to further in the industrial, they are very, uh, the vast, it's, it's very vast. Material science is very vast. Basically, we learn about materials. So we are a combination between chemistry and also um, chemistry, biology, and also physics. Uh, I do not just learn about semiconductor, but I also learn um, about oil and gas, and also about pharmaceuticals. And I also learn about biomaterials. So basically, uh, but then that's the problem, I guess, because uh, we are too vast and we don't know where to like, you know, narrow the path, where to go. But then it's an opportunity to you, which one uh, do you like the most? Which uh, field do you have the most passion on? Maybe you want to further study on pharmaceuticals uh, or like in oil and gas and also in semiconductor. But currently, um, semiconductor is booming industry right now. So um, Osram is also um, asking for people. Osram is one of the most um, semiconductor manufacturer, the largest in German, but then uh, they also currently have in Penang and also in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, one, of the, one of them is, is actually uh, semiconductor is booming. So if you want to go for the study on that kind of field, then you can go. But then one of my senior is also, uh, they, they've got a job in construction. So basically it's kind of, big material science with a career path so i don't know which one do you like the most because if you uh, study in material science you would know which one young you have this kind of interest because we also learn about um alloy and also this composite and those construction site uh composite is uh, the one we learn uh dr zol teach us uh, about composite yeah, he said about to to design a a cloth for example what kind of Composite do you use or you can go and uh, try out that in that kind of industry. You have that kind of knowledge uh, through composite. What can you design a, a clothes that is suitable for the weather or something like that. That is material sign. I guess it is after this a big field. What, which one you want to go? Uh, that's how it is, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I add that. I also got another what relevant question, I think, especially to me, because since I went to the e-learning room, what would your recognition and advice for potential physics student to cope with an online learning environment? Okay, this is a very good question, uh, especially during this new normal. So basically, uh, firstly, when I entered uh, e-learning that I've stated previously, it was very rough. Everyone 
as basically almost everyone don't know what to do. Yeah, rules and everything has to be made up on the go, on the fly. So, but then I believe it's already more than one year in my experience in e-learning. So, firstly, what I learned basically in this midst of e-learning is friends uh, is really important. Friends and people, you know. Uh, it's really important to make sure you wash their back and also they can wash your back. So if the isolation of just, you know, what uh, learning a screen, not interacting with people will get to you, no matter how introverted you are, because we are naturally humans need interaction. So I firstly, I would say that make sure even for first year, you try to communicate with others, try to make friends, even through group chats or anything. I know it, the experience would be the same if you what we didn't meet physically, but at least try to help each other out. And then secondly, for studies, uh, it's easy to get overwhelmed with assignments and tasks at some time because some, sometimes lecturers think we have a lot of time in our home, so they give us a lot of assignments. But then uh, make sure that you know you remind yourself what uh, and I create maybe I create a list of what your current task and current assignment. And then also one thing uh, we need to back, back then, uh, ask your friend. Maybe you missed some of the assignment and then you can remind them assignment. So again, you help each other out. And then thirdly, for your studies, uh, make sure I recommend highly group studies because uh, learning uh, a screen sometimes is very hard to focus, I'll be honest. Uh, actually, when a lecturer speaks in, into the screen, everything, it's much different environment than, let's say, going to class or lecture hall. So it's easy to get what uh, blur or miss out on inf important information sometimes. Uh, of course, you can refer back to the slides, you can read back to the notes, but then uh, one thing for sure that helps me most with my grades is group study. Because through group study, you can learn that where is your gaps in your knowledge. Uh, maybe your friend knows A, but you forgot A. Maybe you know B, so you can teach your friend B, so etc. So whenever you have some similar classes, so try to group study with your friend. And lastly, uh, also important, take care of your mental health and physical health. So in the end, even though your grades are important, but then I don't know about the situation about in other homes, maybe other homes, there's a bit more stressful. Maybe <coughs> you have to take care of some of your siblings and stuff. So not everyone is actually exactly privileged. So you have to give benefit of doubt sometimes. Maybe if your friend uh, sent an assignment late or your friend didn't respond to you instantly, maybe they are busy, maybe their environment is not conducive. So whenever if it's possible, try to seek support from the ones you love, the one, one you trust. And then once in a while, go out and take a brief, take a fresh air and look to, look to the outside world to see that, you know, in, even though we are constricted to this e-learning platform, in the end, this COVID thing will be history, it will pass, and then we'll, we will hopefully become normal again. So don't worry, just persevere through, it won't be forever. And that's mostly my advice for e-learning. So, uh, how will you Malaysia implement natural fiber optic mm, technology? Yeah. yeah, this one I'm not I'm not very knowledgeable about oh, current fiber optic. Do you, do you have a lot of knowledge? Please ask right? my STEM ambassador. Oh, this is a tough question. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we are actually doing on the progress. Okay, implementing national nationwide fiber optics technology, which is your unified, so to say. Right, we want to have fiber optic link all over the country. Uh, it's already in our government agenda for like I'd say uh, more a decade already. Uh, unify is something that fiber optic is ten years thing. It's not something new, okay? But the challenges is uh, it's our government. You know, do we have a political will? As you can see, our current political situation is not that stable. That's one of the challenge. And then, do we have the finance, or we do we have the human resources enough for us to set up the nation? wide fiber optics technology so these are the challenges we are on the way okay i'll just tell you my place i'm at parik jawa just a few weeks ago we i just get my unified so they will set up the fiber distribution unit in your place and once that's set up they can carry out the fiber optic link they will pull the fiber link and do your house and then they will link your house to the uh so-called uh optical link okay because uh, stream mix, if you remember stream mix, stream mix is a copper wire. We're using copper wire. So now we are on the progress. Just, I would say it's rather slow. <laughs> okay. And are we still in developing technology pertaining to this current demand? Yes. Uh, UM, we have Photonics Research Center. That's, uh, I would say, if you check out the equipment and the research output there, it's one of the best in Asian country. 
Okay, so we develop, yes, we develop uh, research to the current demands. Uh, for example, sensor technology is demanding now because we are doing automations. Okay, we want good sensors that can detect uh, the surface of the material. Let's say you are doing material science, you want to inspect a surface of some metals. So you want to have a good sensors and that is using photonics technologies. Or you want to sense temperature change. So there is a technology we call fiber break rating. So that's also an application. UM Photonics Research Center has a lot to do with that. And for future demand, we are running, we are starting up projects to do quantum communication where we want to put quantum signals, which is basically entangled photons in the live, I mean, the fiber, the live stream fiber means there's a live signal inside. We want to call propagate the quantum signal together with the live stream. So yes, we are developing and it's in the progress. Okay, so let's answer the question. Okay. Okay, I think because uh, we have what uh, time constriction, I think um, we have to move on to the next session. Actually, I believe the next session is a quiz session. Is uh, what basic uh, quiz session I prepared? Just few basic questions. Uh, uh, general list, nothing too complex, don't worry. And then uh, you guys can see it. Wait, uh, one moment, uh, let me share back my screen. Okay, and then I, sh I share the question. Here's a quiz. And then first question, when was physics department established? Yeah, I, oh yeah, I, I can I can see your responses actually. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, who, whoever sang or whoever, uh, tell me if anyone got the right answer or anything. Okay. Well, was it 1957, 1961, 1965 or 1970? Has anyone answered? <gasps> I, I can't see the what the chat chat box right now because I'm presenting. Yeah. Ni, Nipita answered C. C. Oh, that, that's close actually. Okay. Then. Vincent nine, V. Eight, seven, oh, Vincent answered B. Yeah, that's correct. It's 1961. Just like I said previously, it's around the same time when UN started. So I move on to question two. Who is famously known for saying the word Eureka? Eureka in Greek, it means I did it or I found it. Okay, is it was it Pythagoras, also known in, in Pythagoras era, Archimedes, hero of Alexandria or Socrates? He's a, right, uh, he's also a pioneer in uh, science and physics a bit back then. I forgot when, but it's quite in, in ancient Greece. Anyone has an idea? <laughs> they are yeah. mostly said B. B. Okay. Mostly say B. Correct. And, okay. Um, Melissa Carr said E. Uh, 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 it's actually Archimedes. Most uh, I'm surprised both of you guys know it. It's basically, uh, it's a what folk tale. Where it could be a myth, but why? Uh, it's made, what mostly people contribute. He's saying Eureka when he what. Uh, was bathing a tub and then the water displaced when he was uh, bathing the tub. So creating the concept known as the Archimedes principle, whereby a body will displace a water equal to its mass. And this, uh, according to another tale, he used this to verify whether the king's crown is made of real gold or fake gold. So very fascinating. So number three, Albert Einstein. Okay, on what work did Einstein do to earn his Nobel Prize? Was it general or special relativity? Was it black holes? Was it the photoelectric effects? Or was it the famous equation E equal MC square? Yeah, a lot of people, you know, uh, this is one of the um, common mis misconceptions. So uh, I, I'm trying to uh, highlight you guys this mis misconception. So what's the answers? C, we have C, we have A, we have D. Yeah. We have all sorts of answers. There are, uh, <laughs> there are multiple answers. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, as expected, yeah. Actually, most people would think that his work on general speciality or gravity is what they call is groundbreaking in the physics. But then, most general public would think, you know, contribute him with the equation energy and mass equivalence e equal mc square. But actually, he earned his Nobel Prize not in these in photoelectric effects, actually. Whereby this effect is also very important in what solar panels and as detectors and, and stuff like that. So it's actually the photoelectric effect. That's it. See. 
So number four, just now I said who is deemed the father of quantum mechanics. So this is a bit of you know refresher exercise. Was it Louis, Louis de Broglie? Uh, this guy created the wave equation with what uh, wave particle. Uh, what, yeah. And then particle Isaac wave Newton, yeah, particle wave duality and a uh, matter wave. Yeah, that's the word, matter wave. Uh -huh. Can't believe I forgot that. Isaac Newton, Owen Schrodinger, or was it Max Planck? You guys remember? Some answer D. Most of them C. C with the cat uh, in the box. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, actually, the answer is D, Max Planck. Even though Owen Schrodinger was famous in quantum mechanics, he is not deemed the father of mechanics. He, yeah, most of you guys would know from the Schrodinger cat experiment, but then Max Planck uh, created the, laid the foundation for quantum mechanics in early 1900s. So he's the dim of father of quantum mechanics. Well, yeah, good, good, good try. I wish for is also very important in quantum mechanics. Okay, we move on to the last question. This is a, what, a prelude, a prequel to what's going to come after this. So Mars mass has, is about how many percent compared to us? Is it 5%? Is it 15%, 25% or 35%? The, 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 the. What's the answers? Any answers? Is, is this, I think this is quite a niche knowledge, so uh, I'm, I'm not surprised you got it wrong because I, I also googled this few few days ago. <laughs> but we this got uh, C. I, C, okay, that's close. C and D. And D. I see. Okay, actually, uh, contrary to properly, mass is a lot lighter than we think. It's really around 15%. Uh, mass, uh, gravity yeah. is, uh, is much weaker, and then the, the air is much thinner. And we'll find out what's important about that later in science we discover. Okay, that's the end. Thank you for your questions. Hopefully, you guys learned something about this question. Because of time constraint, I had to keep it short, sorry. <laughs> So now we'll move on to in science we explore, whereby I teach a bit about what's hot in the what physics community right now and what's hot in the physics department right now. So uh, there's too many things happening in physics department right now. Uh, I mean physics uh, subject right now. Especially recently, uh, the most experimentalists or theorists would know there's something happened with the standard model, which one of the most fundamental models describing our universe and our particle, uh, the Mohn G2 experiment. But the, it's a bit complex, so I try. I'll go to something more general, which is the back then to the Perseverance rover. So here in science we explore. So the Perseverance rover, uh, even though it's very interesting, it's not the main focus because it happened last year. But here I'm talking about a bit a bit about it. So basically, it launched in 30th of July 2020 and landed in Mars in 18th of February 2020. So the purpose of this rover is to find habitable condition <coughs> or something called biosignatures they try to find traces of life in mars and the mars history whether you know enough water could support life or back then maybe there's microbial life or any any form of life so they landed in one of the what a large crater called the j0 crater which has one of the most preserved data of river bank deposit and from this deposit they can research research the stuff because i believe this server quality drive around 200 meter per day during the Martian day from its solar panel power. So it couldn't drive that far, so they have to make sure they land on somewhere that is suitable. But uh, you see, there's many modules on this rover, and one of the modules actually is very interesting. It's actually a helicopter. It's called Ingenuity Helicopter. So this helicopter is fascinating because, you know what? It's going to fly tomorrow, 3.30 Malaysia time. So you can stream it in YouTube or something. Just search Ingenuity Helicopter. So it's on tomorrow, 3.30 PM Malaysia time. And what's interesting about this is it's going to be one of the first, uh, it is the first the what control flight in another planet. What, do, don't mm -hmm. you think that it's around 280 uh, million kilometers away from us? And then yet they can, we can create something called like, like RC drone, RC what, helicopter that could fly in another planet. And flying in Mars is not easy. Mars is and we'll say it's 100 times thinner than and Earth. So we have to, the wings have to propel themselves and work themselves harder, even though Mars is slightly lower than Earth, but then the air is so thin, so the propellers have not much air to push against the what to create lift. But then that's why the smart scientists in uh, NASA use like carbon fiber and a lot, lot of uh, light materials and power to make it only weigh 1.8 uh, kilograms. And this blade spins a very, very high revolution, I mean 2000 revolution per minute. But then not only that, not only the air is very thin, the weather condition in Martian is quite extreme. 
So the temperature could fluctuate in certain areas from 20 Celsius during the day, around 19 Celsius at night. That's very cold. So they have to design the components so that it could withstand this, the battery and stuff like that, even with the solar panel. So of course, like I said, the mass is around 270 million kilometers away from Earth. So sadly, if we were to control it ourselves, there's too much delay and the signal and to get the feedback. So they have been programmed to be operated aut automatically. So basically, the purpose of this is actually uh, not much research. It's actually a test concept to whether to see that you know a drone flight or a helicopter flight in Mars would be viable. But it's still very fascinating. We are flying basically an RC drone, uh, millions of kilometers away from Malaysia, uh, from from the Earth. So you can check it out tomorrow, three thirty p.m. Uh, Malaysia time. Yeah, just uh, search YouTube Institute Helicopter Live Stream. So I encourage you guys to see. It. So that's pretty much it for it's science we explore. Okay, <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. Thank you so much. I have very fun to hear it. Uh, first, I deeply apologize for the technical earlier. Maybe in future we can discuss how to increase internet's law of physics. Mm -hmm. how, how to increase uh, internet's <laughs> law of physics? Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> All right, so this uh, question to fill in this time right now. Uh, so, say you want yes, to answer maybe this, a or... short answer. <laughs> what, what, what's, the, what's the question again? I was lost. I got a big connection lost just now. How to, like how to uh, in increase internet speed or connection using law physics? Yeah. How to increase internet speed or connections using law <laughs> yeah. Okay. Basically, uh, we use again it's optical fiber so light travel in vacuum the speed already measure is 3 to the 10 to the power of 8 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second so that's the speed all right so in optical fiber we have our material this back to material science again so the basic material we're using is silica silica is your standard glass so refractive index is around 1.54 to one point five seven that's around that so you put light inside you have to obey the law so go into the refractive medium it's going to travel a little bit slow a little bit slow just a little bit slow it's also very fast so how are you going to propagate faster okay so you play with the material if you can discover or you can design like what amira said just now composite material you can design some refractive material good enough for the light to travel faster than this standard uh, single mode, single standard fibers, so to say. So you, you will get faster connections. But the question is, we are already fast enough, right? It's already fast enough. You put inside silica also is around 2.9 something, 10 to the power of eight. That's very fast, okay? So are we going to develop this? And another question is, okay, if we discover something new, a novel material, for such propagation, is it commercialized? Is it able to commercialize? Is it going to be as cheap as silica? Silica is just you take the sand, you burn it to very high temperature, you get silica. Uh, if you design something else, that's going to cost a lot. So that's uh, that's how uh, that's the the thing you need to consider uh, when you design the optical fiber. Thank you so much for the great insight that I do. <laughs> uh, over thank you so much to Mr. Jasman Faik bin Baharudin, Mr. Tay Lian Seng and Ms. Nur Amira Nordin for the detailed explanation conveyed during the sharing session. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see in the live chat, there will be a feedback for SF team. Kindly fill up the form as your feedback will be counted in choosing the winner for the best presenter. Well, before we end our last session for today, let's give our brightest smile for photography session. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right, ladies you. and gentlemen, now we are done with day two of VSF Science Exhibition. I would like to thank all the presenters and also all of you for attending our VSF Science Exhibition 2021. We truly appreciate it. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to apologize if we have done any mistakes throughout the event. 
I hope all of you are able to comprehend many new knowledge and understand more about mathematics and physics courses in University of Malaya. Don't forget to keep in tune for our next VSL Self Science exhibition on April 2021. With that, till we meet again, I am Amira Ayanti. Assalamualaikum, thank you, and good day. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Everyone.